Today we will consider the coherence theory of truth and the pragmatist theory of truth. Let us begin with the concept of the coherence theory of truth. A coherence theory of truth states that the truth of, a, of any true proposition consists in its coherence with some specified set of proposition, propositions. There are two differences between correspondence and coherence theories of truth. The first difference. The com competent theories give conflicting accounts of the relation that propositions bear to their truth conditions. The notion of proposition, proposition is not used in any technical sense here. It is simply refers to the bearers of truth values, whatever they may be. According to, to one, the relation is coherence. According to the other, it is correspondence. Difference two consists in that the two theories also give conflicting accounts of truth conditions. According to the coherence theory, the truth conditions of proportions consist in other proportion, propositions. According to coherence theory, the truth conditions of propositions consist in other propositions. The correspondence theory, in contrast, states that the truth conditions of propositions are not, in general, propositions, but rather objective features of the world. Even the correspondence theorists hold that propositions about propositions have propositions as their truth conditions. Let us consider common, uh, some common fe feature, uh, one common feature of correspondence and coherence theories of truth. Although the coherence and correspondence theories are fundamentally opposed in this way, they both present, in contrast to deflationary theories of truth, a substantive uh, theory of truth. A substantive means from Latin some substantivus, having an independent existence. That is, unlike deflationary theories, the coherence and correspondence theories both hold that truth is a poverty of propositions that can be analyzed in terms of the sorts of truth conditions propositions have, and the relations propositions stand in the, uh, into these conditions. Versions of coherence theories of truth. The coherence theory of truth has several versions. These versions differ on two major is issues. The first issue. They give different accounts of the coherence relation. And the second issue. They give various accounts of the set or sets of propositions with which with which uh, true propositions cohere. Such a set we will call here a specified set. That is precisely means defined set. Uh, this is mean, um, means precisely defined set. Let us consider some versions of the coherence theories of truth. And we begin with early versions of the coherence theory of truth. According to some early versions of the coherence theory of, of truth, the coherence relation is simply consistency. On this view, to say that a proposition coheres with a specified set of propositions is to say that the proposition is consistent with the set. This account of coherence is unsatisfactory for the following reason. Consider two, two propositions which do not belong to a specified set. These propositions could, be, could both be consistent with a specified set and yet be inconsistent with, with each other. If coherence is consistency, the coherence theory, theorist uh, would have to claim that both propositions are true, but this is impossible. Uh, there are some versions of the coherence theory of truth which are based on some form of entailment. 
Entailment can be understood here as a strict logical entailment, or entailment in some looser sense. According to this version, a proposition coheres with a set of propositions if and, if and only if it is entailed by members of, a set, of the set. Another more plausible version, version of the theory held, for example, in Bradley, 1914 is that coherence is mutual explanatory support between propositions. Let, uh, let us consider versions of the coherence theory of truth which based on different, on different understanding of the constitution of the specified set of propositions. Coherentists generally agree that the specified set consists of propositions believed or held to be true. They differ on the questions of who believes the propositions and when. At one extreme, coherence theorists can hold that the specified set of propositions is the largest consistent set of propositions currently believed by actual people. For such a version of the theory, you can consider uh, a paper of Young in 1995. According to a moderate position, the specified set consists of those propositions which will be believed when people like us within, uh, with finite cognitive capacities have reached some limit of an inquiry. For such a coherent theory, see, for example, a paper of Putnam in 1981. At the other extreme, coherence theorists can maintain that the specified set contains the propositions which would be believed by an omniscient being. Some idealists seem to accept this account of the specified set. All the above mentioned lead us to conclusions that there are two main times, types of the coherence theory of truth. Let us consider the first type. The most popular and well-known version of the coherent theory of truth claims that true knowledge is always internally consistent and systematically, systematically ordered. Here there is, an, is a rapprochement with the interpretation of truth in the sense of logical correctness. With all the par partial validity of this approach, it uh, should still be admitted that the absence of logical contradictions and the interconnectedness of judgments within a theory by no means testifies to its truth, and conversely the presence of dialectical and antinomic judgments within the theory does not yet give grounds to conclude that it is false. And the first type uh, and the second type of the coherence theory of truth uh, is the follows. According to the second version of the coherence theory of truth, the hypothesis that does not contradict the fundamental knowledge that exists in science should be recognized as true. For example, if some physical hypothesis contradicts the law of energy conservation, then, in this case, there is every reason to believe that it is false. However, this criterion also cannot be absolutized, because any new fundamental theory always contradicts some generally accepted knowledge. Thank you. And we begin part 4, which is devoted to the pragmatic theory of truth. Let us begin with the concept of pragmatism. Pragmatism from the ancient Greek pragma means deed, act. And pragmatism is the trend of American thought in which the factor of practice is used as a methodological principle of philosophy. Pragmatism emerged in the 18th 
70s and formed by the first half of the 20th century, and as a tendency it persisted in the second half of the 20th century. Pragmatism is associated with the work of thinkers different in their stylistics. For example, Charles Sanders, Sanders Pierce, William James, John Dewey, George Mead, naturalists, pragmatic analyst, analysts, or neo-pragmatists. Supporters of pragmatism were in Great Britain and other countries. Let us consider the general characteristic of the pragmatic theory of truth. Pragmatic theories of truth are usually associ associated either with Charles Sander Sanders Peirce's proposal that true beliefs will be accepted at the end of an inquiry, or with William James's proposal that truth be defined in terms of utility. More broadly, however, pragmatic theories of truth focus on the connection between truth and epistemic practices, notably practices of an inquiry and assertion. Depending on the particular pragmatic theory, true statements might be those that are useful to believe, that are the result of inquiry, that have withstood ongoing examination, that meet a standard of warranty's assertability, or that represent norms of assertoric discourse. Like other theories of truth, for example, coherence or deflationary theories of truth, pragmatic theories of truth are often put forward as an alternative to correspondence theories of truth. Unlike correspondence theories, which tend to see truth as a static relation between a truth-bearer and a truth-maker, pragmatic theories of truth tend to view truth as a, fun as function, as a function of the practices people engaged in and the commitments people make when they solve problems, make assertions or conduct scientific inquiry. More broadly, pragmatic theories tend to emphasize the significant role the concept of truth plays across a range of disciplines and discourses. Not just scientific and fact-stating discourse, but also ethical, legal and political discourse as well. Pragmatic theories of truth have the effect of shifting attention away from what makes a statement true and toward what people mean or do in describing a statement as true. While sharing many of the impulses behind deflationary theories of truth, in particular the idea that truth is not a substantial property, pragmatic theories also tend to view truth as more than just a useful tool for making generalization, generalizations. Pragmatic theories of true, truth uh, thus emphasize the broader practical and performative dimensions of, of truth talk, stressing the role truth plays in shaping certain kinds of discourse. These practical dim dimensions, according to, the pragma to pragmatic theories, are essential to understanding the concept of truth. As these references to pragmatic theories would suggest, over the years a number of different approaches have been classified as pragmatic. This points to a degree of ambiguity, ambiguity that has been present since the earliest formulation of the pragmatic theories of theory of truth. For example, the difference between Pierce's claims that truth is the opinion which is fated to be ultimately agreed to by all who investigate, and James's claim that truth is only the expedient in the way of our thinking. Since then, the situation has arguably gotten worse, not better. 
the often significant differences between various pragmatic theories of truth can make it difficult to determine their shared commitments, if any, while also making it difficult to critique these theories overall. Issues with one version may not apply to other versions, which means that pragmatic theories of truth may well present more of a moving target, the target uh, than do other theories of truth. While few today would equate truth with expedience or utility, as James often seems to do, where remains the question of what the pragmatic theory of truth stands for and how it is related to other theories. Still, pragmatic theories of truth continue to be put forward and defended, often as serious alternatives to more widely accepted theories of truth. Let us consider history of the pragmatic theory of truth. The history of the pragmatic theory of truth is tied to the history of classical American pragmatism. According to the standard account, Charles Sanders Peirce gets credit for first proposing a pragmatic theory of truth, and William James is responsible for popularizing the pragmatic theory, as, as well as John Dewey subsequently reframed truth in terms of warranted assertability. More specifically, Peirce is associated with the idea that true beliefs are those that will withstand future scrutiny. James, with the idea that true beliefs are dependable and useful, and Dewey with the idea that truth is a property of well-verified claims or judgments. Let us consider Pierce's pragmatic theory of truth. The American philosopher, logician and scientist, scientist Charles Sanders Pierce is generally recognized for, for first proposing a pragmatic theory of truth. Pierce's pragmatic theory of truth is a byproduct of his pragmatical theory of meaning. In a frequently quoted passage in How to Make Our Ideas Clear, Pierce writes that in order to pin down the meaning of a concept, we must consider what effects, which might conceivably have practical bearings, we, can, we conceive the object of our conception to have. Then, our conception of these effects is the whole of our conception of the object. The meaning of the concept of truth, then, boils down, down to the practical bearings of using this term, that is, of describing a belief as true. What, then, is the practical difference of describing a belief as true, as opposed to any number of other positive attributes such as creative, clever, or, or well-justified? Pierce's answer to this question is that true beliefs eventually gain general acceptance by withstanding, withstanding future in inquiry. Inquiry for Pierce is the process that takes us from a state of doubt to a state of stable belief. This give, gives us the pragmatic meaning of truth and leads Pierce to conclude, in another frequently quoted passage, that all the followers of science are fully persuaded that the processes of investigation, if only pushed far enough, will give one certain solution to every question to which they can be applied. The opinion which is fated to be ultimately agreed to, to by all who investigate is what we mean by the truth. And uh, let us consider general conclusions on part 4. The essence of the pragmatic theory of truth consists 
in the fact that knowledge should be assessed as true if it is capable of providing a certain real result. Experimental, utilitarian, utilitarian pragmatic, etc. In other words, truth is identified here with utility or efficiency. In principle, knowledge, especially contemporary scientific knowledge, is very pragmatic. If a theoretical scientist does not receive new results, his scientific reputation and then his qualifications may be questioned. If an engineer does not invent new technical equipment and devices, his salary may be stopped. However, the utilitarian orientation of science should not be exaggerated. Many discoveries were made by creators, of course, not from utilitarian considerations, but from a pure love of truth. Many scientific theories at the time of their creation have no experimental and technical application at all. Moreover, the most strategically significant ideas, especially in philosophy, are by definition disinterested and anti-utilitarian. Otherwise, they could never open new horizons in being and cognition. Thank you for your attention.